Hi, so today we're doing grafting, grafting an avocado to get proper bearing and proper fruit. So I'm going to show you the many methods that you can use, but today I'm going to show you the wedge and a bench method. I'm using normal household tools. So I have a knife, a plastic bag. This is the plastic bag I'm using and a pair of scissors. So these are all equipment I'll be using today an ordinary kitchen knife, a scissors, and a plastic bag. The most important thing is to make sure that these things are sanitized. You can use warm water and soap to rinse them properly to make sure they are sanitized. Um, you can wear protective gloves to ensure that you do not contaminate the plant. So that's one of the most important things. So I'm going to show you the steps. At the end of the video, I'll be showing you some pictures to help you with the understanding or the science behind grafting to get successful results so the first one first step we're going to do we're going to make sure you remove all the leaves the reason why you want to remove the leaves is to ensure that you reduce transpiration which is the loss of water from the plant to so reduce transpiration because once the leaves are there then there's a chance that water will lose will leave from the plant very rapidly and you lose the the, the, the stem so this is from a plant that is producing quality fruits. And so if you have an avocado plant and not producing quality fruits, then it's a very good way to produce quality by getting a quality stem and putting it onto a plant that is not producing such good plants. And as a matter of fact, you can use the same method to have more than one variety or species or type of avocado on one tree. So if a neighbor have a good tree and your tree is not so good, then this is a good way to make sure that you have good avocado so what i'm going to do is to create a wedge so if you notice what i'm doing the, the wedge notice i cut both sides i'll be showing you the different parts and the importance of these parts so inside there is the pith and then you have a cambium on the outside so on the outermost part is where food will travel and the innermost part is where water and minerals will travel and you want to make sure those are lined up to what you're putting onto your stock so on the stock you can just clean a few leaves on off to make sure that you can see exactly what you're doing and then you cut into it and this is a quite very easy method to do all you need to do is cut down the stem like that and so this can able to stick into it and so one, once this is lined up pretty much that will be it so what you're going to do now is to cut the plastic bag so I'm going to cut the plastic bag and you will see the strips I'm going to cut from a plastic bag so what I'll be doing is cutting the cutting strips from this and it's an ordinary plastic bag getting from the food store so you can just cut the ends off very importantly so you can get strips you could tie it on to the plant and again importantly just keep these things clean which is the most important thing so just rip off the base of the, of the scissors and then you could make a few strips from this. So there are many ways you could do it. Um, in the store, they will sell the proper tools that you can use if you want to buy them. But if you're just doing this at home, there's no need to buy all of these fancy equipment. So you could make your own strips, you could make your own plastic bag. Um, you use a kitchen knife, but make sure you clean that, sanitize it with soap and water. All right, so now I have a nice strip. All right, so get that there and you can make as many strips as you want so you can get them tied properly All right, then get one more strip to inch to make sure that I have enough and you want to make sure you secure this onto the tree that's that's the most important thing for these strips and you could cut these prior to cutting this the stem because you do not want the stem to be out too long because you don't want the enzymes to start activated and start to dry out the stem all right so we're going to put this on now so i have one piece here so all you need to stick it in and you make sure that all the barks and all the parts are lined up properly so notice the wedge is inside and the cambium is um, the cambium touching each other and the pith will be in the middle so that will be absolutely fine and all you need to do is to sure that you cover all the parts that you cut 
to prevent water from going through. And remember the reason why you cut off the leaves is to prevent excess transpiration, which is a loss of water from the leaves. Because once too much water is leaving from the plant, then the stem will definitely die. So you have to make sure you retain the water. So once you get that tied, um, just wrap it firmly around as best as you possibly can. You tie that on and you pretty much, you are finished. And you're going to have beautiful, you can do as much stem as you want, um, as much as possible on the same plant. So what you can do is you can make sure that most of the stems that you want get fruit on, you can also do that on. And the next, the next trick is a very, the next trick is to cover, so the next trick is to cover this to ensure that the, the, the water stays in. And what is doing, the plastic bag is making sure around the stem is humid and high humidity will decrease transpiration rate. So once you get this covered and you can tie the base and pretty much that's it. You are ready to go. All right, so get all the leaves in, the base leaves, get them inside of the, the bag. And just to create some shade and keep the water in and pretty much that's it. And by next season, you should see some flowers and um, flower, and you should see some fruit possible. And so it's an easy way, quick way to get different variety of um, avocado or better quality avocado on this and the old tree that you have inside of your yard. All right, so that's it. So I'll give you some information shortly on the different methods or the, the science behind the grafting process. All right, this is the bench. You know, this way I cut this is not a wedge, so I cut this like a bench and I cut the the stock as a bench so both of them could fit onto it like that and once it fit onto it it goes tight and cover just that the same procedure but the idea is to make sure different parts of the stem they are touching so they can heal together and form a new bark so it's similar to what i've done before but this time is a bench so i'm just going to before I put that on i'm going to show you the bench again i'll show the labelings and the importance of these things at the closer to the end of the video but they are very successful. The, the wedge is kind of the easiest method to use because they're slipping. And this one, you have to make sure you cut them on the same length. You notice the length, they are the same. And they will join onto that like that. And they become one stem eventually. All right, so now this is tied together. And you can do it as firmly because you want to make sure that they that the barks are held tightly together and once you finish that you could cover it if it's on that very cool spot then there's no need to really cover it like that because the idea is to make sure you prevent water loss from the stems all right so if it's in a very cool shady area then that is kind of a fine but if it's out in the open we have a lot of sun then the direct sun will make the water dry from the stem too quickly and you can check back within two to three weeks you should see um, some progress in terms of new growth coming from the tip of a plant. The tip of a plant is where the auxin will be. That's a growth hormone. So you want to make sure you preserve this. If a tip is dried and nothing is growing from the side, so the lateral buds, if they're not growing, so if lateral buds are not growing, then you know there's something is wrong with the stem. So first, check the tip. If the tip remains green, fresh, then you know that it is progressive. And after two to three weeks, you should see some new growth. That's where most of the auxin will be. And the lateral buds, they should start growing as well. So you can just check back within a few weeks and you should be good. All right, so again, I'll give you the information at the back at the end of the video. So look out for the information in terms of the science behind all of this. And so we're looking for progress like this. You should see some nice fruits after a while in next season. So we keep on seeing new fruits. And also you get a lot of fruits from these um, stems. So grafting is a very good method in terms of propagating plants to get um, faster growth, better quality fruits in a very short time. Planted from seeds may take 10 to 15 years. So grafting is a good solution for you to get new or quality fruits um, at home. And you don't have to buy fancy tools. Again, you just make sure your tools are sharp and they are sanitized. That's the most important thing. Okay, so see quality fruits may come. So if you're looking for plants like this to get quality fruits, if you want to get a tree bearing, um, similar to this one then you can do grafting and you get the proper results so it's a very good method to get easier faster fruits and even bigger better quality fruits right, now you have come to the end or almost the end of the grafting method so i just want to finish off with a few scientific reasoning behind the method of grafting and here in my hand you see a cut stem the outermost layer which you call the bark which is known as the epidermis 
which is mainly for protecting the leaf. It also aids in preventing some water loss from the stem as well because it contains a lot of cellulose within this region. And cellulose is what you also call fiber. You also have the cortex, and the cortex will have some specialized cells such as the cholenchyma and parenchyma. And those will also provide support as well and produce cells that are very important in making cell wall. The innermost part is called the pith, and the pith is generally supporting the plant as well. And I want to outline and point out a few things when I come onto this layer because this layer is going to be very, very important when you're grafting. And so this is something closer to what you'll see when you're actually doing your method. So this is pretty much one side of the stem that you'll cut. Both sides will cut like this. As a matter of fact, you can use this and scrape the side of another plant tight onto the side of it and it also will grow. So very importantly, again, coming from the cortex on the outermost part, you'll see what they call a cambium. Once a cambium is exposed, then it is more likely that you'll get the phloem and the xylem attached to the other plant. The phloem is what will transport the food of the plant is closer out to the outermost part, which is the outer region of the cambium. And the xylem, which is transporting water and mineral salts, and that will find in the innermost part of the cambium. So it's very important to note that you match up these at least to the new plants. If you notice the region, you can see the different layers coming from the outside, which is the epidermis. Then you go into the cambium and then the exposed region of the food um, transporting vessels and also water transporting vessels will be around this region. So it's very important for you to make sure you match up those. And once those are matched up, then the new cells will start growing by mitosis, which is a form of a cell division, and hence you'll have a new plant. And again, this will be the pith, which will give the most um, hoodie part of the plant, and that will give support to the plant whilst it's growing. Very important for you to remove the leaves of the stem that you're putting onto the new plant. Why you remove the stem? Once you remove the stem, you, are, you will reduce the possibility of water loss from the plant by transpiration because water moves or evaporates from the plant through the leaves. So it's very important for you to move them. Importantly, while removing the leaves, you have to make sure that the apical bud or the terminal bud you find on the tip of the plant, make sure that is intact. That is what you have most of the growth hormone, which is called auxin, being produced. And so the auxin that are produced in the tip of the plant will aid in the growth of this new stem. So it's very important for you to protect that um, bud. Also on the side, you have the lateral bud, otherwise called the auxiliary bud. And those will give you your horizontal or lateral growth. These as well will contain, will contain some amount of um, auxin. So it's very important for at least to protect these. And once these buds are intact, notice all of them are intact while you move the leaves. They are very important. And those you actually observe to see your new growth. So it's very important for you to look out for, uh, for those, definitely. So I hope you enjoy this. And um, I'll see you back on, an, on this channel to view more um, scientific methods of doing things. So glad to have you here.